Ah, Paddock. This film was recommended to me just the other week. After all the dark and intense stuff we tend to look at, this one looks like a nice change of pace. Look at that happy little fish. Look at the way it's triumphantly jumped into the air. Even the birds look perplexed. Like, what are you doing leaping out of the water there, little fish? Oh, and there's the shopkeeper. Boy, he looks amazed at what he is seeing. <laughs> yep, I think this is going to be a fun film. A triumphant film. A film for all the family. Imagine if you took the fish tank setting from Finding Nemo and mixed it with the graphic violence from Watership Down, drizzled it in the depressing tone of Plague Dogs, and gave it a garnish of that sushi scene from the Isle of Dogs. That's basically this film on a plate. So I think it's only fair to give warning, despite the happy-go-lucky poster, that this is not a kid's film and does depict scenes of violence, gore, and animal cruelty. So, if you're not up for that, now's your chance to switch off, and never be burdened with the images that are about to come up. As for the rest of us, oh boy are we in for a treat. So let's take a look at the film, Paddock. The film opens up on a Korean fish market, where we follow the journey of a lone mackerel who has recently been caught from the sea. What's a mackerel? I'm a mackerel! Now get me out of this mayonnaise jar! Uh, uh, don't mind him, he's always like that. Immediately you get this instant vibe of what this film will be. The dark piano score we hear playing as we see elements of the fish market really sets the feeling of impending doom. And I love that we get various shots from the fish's perspective. A sort of fisheye lens, you could say. Showing the confusing and claustrophobic setting, and a quick shot we see of the fisherman taking cash as he sells them off. A subtle visual as to how their lives can be summed up in a few bucks. The lone mackerel gets taken to a local fish restaurant, where again, we get an insight into the value of the fish's well being. And not only that, but it also happens to be one of those restaurants where the fish are served up as fresh as possible, meaning that they are cut up and even served while still alive. You know, you've seen them on YouTube. Gasping every once in a while, oh my god. Still alive! <laughs> <laughs> so delicious. And this film pulls no punches when showing this. Like, we get a full scene where we see a live fish getting cut up in front of us, and this is done in one camera shot with nothing but the sounds of slicing and squelching playing over the top. All the while we get to view the poor little fish's face as he gets dissected up. Very disturbing. I would like to forget seeing this. Our lone mackerel gets taken out of the cram tank and put into another one which is more spacious and contains more unique types of fish. Here we meet our main cast of characters. A rockfish named Bream, a nameless old sleepy sea bass, an eel named Juldum, Miss Snapper, who I believe is a snapper fish, and Spotty who I think might be a dog snapper, but I'm really not sure. There's not much information about this film online, nor am I really a fish expert. But if you guys happen to know, please let me know in the comments below. All of these fish are led by an old flatfish, whom they refer to as the master. The master has managed to survive the longest at the fish restaurant, by hiding under a grill at the bottom of the fish tank. He also states that he was originally from the sea, as opposed to the other fish who are from fish farms. So the other fish come to respect him as the all-knowing guru. Despite the fish becoming experts on how to survive being eaten, all have given up hope on ever escaping. And so it's up to the new mackerel, later named Paddock, 
완전 죽으려고 파닥파닥이구만 <웃음> 파닥파닥 To figure out a way to escape the tank and get everyone back to the sea. What you'll quickly find about our cast of hero fish though is despite all being in the same situation of peril, they're hardly a bunch of saints themselves as they will frequently bully one another and even revel in the joy as they murder an old fish that was fed to them as food. <laughs> Jesus, fish are arseholes. Paddock makes an attempt to escape, but unfortunately fails. Conflict begins to rise in the tank as Paddock begins to question the master's knowledge and criticizes him for deluding the other fish that all hope is lost, resulting in her getting a pretty brutal beatdown. Spotty, however, takes an interest in Paddock's stories about the sea and attempts to escape with her for a second try. This time they almost do make it to the sea, but are caught by some passing customers, where Paddock makes the decision to stay behind so not to leave Spotty alone. The old sea bass comes up with an idea that they could use the king crabs to break the tank walls, so Paddock, being able to speak crab, decides that she will jump into their tank to ask for help. <laughs> Unfortunately, however, the crabs don't seem too eager to cooperate. Luckily for Paddock though, a young boy is there to rescue her. A terrifying young boy who looks like the regrettable love child of Sid from Toy Story and the ugly girl from Finding Nemo. Speaking of Finding Nemo, Paddock is placed into an indoor aquarium full of adorable little clownfish. I wonder if she'll be able to use them in any way to help them escape. God, look at how small and cute they are. They are so... And holy shit, she's eating the little Nemo's. Well, that was certainly unexpected, wasn't it? Paddock, the one fish in the film that seems to be caring and level-headed, suddenly goes full on dark side and murders a bunch of younglings. I think Paddock could do with one of Bruce's class sessions. Fish are friends, not food. During her Nemo genocide, however, she's impaled with a sword from a statue in the tank, which ends up knocking her out. Back in the main tank, the other fish presume Paddock has been killed. So in her honor, Spotty decides to take it upon himself to jump into the crab tank to see if he can then convince them to work together. Now, this is where I'm actually going to put a spoiler alert for the rest of the film, as what happened in the third act genuinely shocked me. So if you don't want the ending to be spoiled, skip to this part of the video. There's your warning. So Spotty is later returned to the tank with the other fish, where it turns out that the crabs not only ignored his plea for help, but also ended up killing him. What? Seen as how throughout the film, Spotty was the only fish in the tank that seemed genuinely interested in escaping with Paddock, and how the film portrayed him as the young, innocent persona full of hope, I really thought out of all the fish, he would be the one to make it out alive. But no, he's dead, and that's the end of him. Sorry Spotty, rest in peace. Paddock is then returned to the main tank, and obviously not knowing the full story, assumes that the master is the one that killed Spotty, so starts attacking him in a fit of rage. Oh yeah, sure, the genocide of cute little Nemo's, it's fine, but the death of a fish that you've known for two days, now you're morally enraged? <laughs> During the commotion, the fish are unaware that there are customers outside, and being outside of his hiding spot under the grill, the master is selected as the next meal. Whilst he lays there on the chopping board, we get this intense scene which shows his perspective of the restaurant, as he sees glimpses of live fish being cooked and eaten. Yep, cool, didn't want to sleep later tonight anyway. As traumatizing as this scene is, there's actually a really nice moment with the animation where the master sees Spotty's carcass and a droplet of water runs down from his head and across his eye, 
which is a great way to convey a tear of emotion without actually making him cry. I don't know, I thought that was quite clever. Right before the martyr is about to be killed however, the customers decide that they no longer want the flatfish and so he is spared and returned back to the tank. But there's no time for celebration though, and again, massive spoiler alert, because it turns out they want mackerel instead, and just like that, Paddock is fucking killed. What? I honestly can't say I saw that coming. Not only is the main character of the film suddenly killed off, but it happens so quickly. There's no suspense of her lying there on the work table, we don't see her actually getting killed, all we see is her getting served on a plate, still alive, and being mocked by the customers. Jesus Christ! So that's both Spotty and Paddock gone. So does anyone manage to escape in this film? Having truly seen the horrors of what goes on inside, the master finally decides that he has also had enough and makes a break for the sea. In what is actually an incredibly tense scene, as you see him flopping along with the chef owner trying to catch him, you are really rooting for him to get to the edge. But just before he can make it to the edge, he is stopped by the chef. But just as all hope looks lost, using the statue piece acquired from Paddock earlier, the master is able to escape the human and make it back to the ocean. Yay! Where as he dives into the sea, we get a look back at all the other fish that remain still in the restaurant, who are no doubt going to die at a later point. Y yay? The film ends and the credits roll. Holy shit, what a film. Well, if its message was to get across the cruelty of fish markets and the inhumane methods of killing and consuming fish, well, I'd say they achieved it. Whereas Finding Nemo tried to convey the message that keeping fish in aquariums was cruel, it didn't really do much to make the message hit home. You get this one throwaway line, Fish aren't meant to be in a box, kid. It does things to you. But it's mostly played up for laughs. Whereas this one really pulls no punches in showing the inhumane and cruel scenarios the fish are put through. Kinda like with the film Play Dogs, you really are rooting for the animals to come out on top, but unfortunately by the end, they really don't. I mean, sure the master got free, but Spotty didn't make it, Paddock didn't make it, and nothing has really happened to the restaurant, so business will carry on as usual and so all the fish left behind will continue to suffer. Speaking of plots, it was interesting as to how out of all the fish in the tank, it was the master that got to escape. Like, yeah, he did get a lot of character focus on him, as we see his backstory, and even see him have a bit of a character arc as the film goes on. But I thought his arc would conclude with him sacrificing himself so that the other fish could live, especially with how he's questioned about how being a coward is not making his life worth living. It would have been nice closure for his last moments of life to be his most worthwhile. But then again, this film had established that it was going for a far more realistic route rather than a fantasy driven plot. So although I can't say I expected the film to turn out how it did, I also can't say I felt cheated by it either. What I like about this film and its realism is that no one is a straight up good guy in it. The other fish in the tank are pretty ruthless, happy to devour another fish that is pleading for its life, and will even turn on each other if the opportunity presents itself. Spotty, who we think is the young innocent cute fish, even can't resist the taste of fish flesh. And then of course there's Paddock, our main good wholesome character, who even refuses to eat the dead fish, suddenly goes genocidal and starts devouring Nemo's. But yeah, that is how fish behave. Have you ever seen fish in an aquarium? They do nip at each other's tails, they do feast on the dead ones, and they do prey on the smaller fish. Take it from someone who used to own a bunch of them, fish are arseholes. The animation for this film is a bit of a mixed bag. 
Whereas I think the fish and set pieces look pretty good, the human characters, however, not quite. The cell shaded CGI style gives the humans an unnatural appearance, and their movements come across as very stiff. It's that kind of cheap CGI that just makes them look more creepy. Like that episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog with the Return the Slab guy. Return the slab. Ooh. But what I do like is how pretty much the entire film takes place in this one location, which must have saved quite some money as you only have to design one set piece. And despite only taking place in one location, the film never feels like it's lacking because of it. There are also a few musical numbers thrown in which utilize some really nice 2D animation, offering some really creative and striking visuals. It's just a shame that this film didn't perform too well at the box office and didn't see a wider release. And as a result, there is currently only a subbed version of the film. But to be fair, when you're marketing your film as a family-friendly piece and even trying to capitalize on the Finding Nemo popularity, yeah, you're not really gonna hit your mature target audience. But having seen the film myself, I would personally recommend checking out Paddock. It hits hard, it cuts deep, offers something fresh, and is definitely something you need to see.